there is a failure rate uh, with uh, with venous sinus stenting as as uh, in every therapy. And um, um, a few, couple of years ago, we had looked at patients that were um, treated with venous sinus stenting for documented IIH that were followed for a long time, at least 18 months. So essentially, this was like the, the first group of patients that I, I had treated, and we had up to eight years follow-up at the time. And we defined treatment failure as having combination of ongoing headaches, despite consistent with elevated pressure, um, persistent papilledema, persistent increased pressure uh, on, uh, on spinal tap, and all new stenosis on, on uh, MRV. And patients need to have two of these four criteria for us to determine this are treatment failure. So this was not necessarily the patients that we had to necessarily have to be retreated, but this was what it, how we defined treatment failure. And the reality is that these patients eventually were retreated uh, either with stenting um, and or with shunt. So the treatment failure uh, in this initial group of patients was 14%. And again, this is these are long-term results. These are like at least 18 month follow-up. Uh, so I think these are relatively accurate in terms of the longevity of, of treatment uh, for IIH patients. And uh, the one patient went straight for, to shunt um, and the other 10 patients were treated with repeat stenting. And two of these patients ended up needing a shunt after recurrence after uh, the second stent procedure. So overall, 4% of patients initially treated with venous stenting had to be treated with, with a shunt. Um, and I think that number in, in my practice, I think is still uh, um, accurate. Um, certainly two or 3%, 4% of patients may need long-term um, shunting after, after stenting, at least from, you know, based on the current treatment options that we have. Uh, can I uh, interrupt here, uh, Atos, uh, again? So, um, who are the patients that you stunted? The patients that are not doing well, still have high ICP, but you don't see a recurrent stenosis? Is it those patients? Or a new stenosis, I mean? You mean which patients that did not stent, you say? Yeah, which patient uh, required shunting? I think I think initial the patient who requires shunting initially. I remember this patient very well. Um, at the time, the recurrence was in the superior sagittal sinus, and was very early on in in our experience. Mm -hmm. And I thought that um, this was uncharted territory. And I had a discussion with her, and she opted to have the more um, you know more established treatment. Um, the other patients that required shunt after stenting. It was patients that we we treated and then new stenosis developed and then new stenosis developed. So we, you know, these are I think they are these are patients with structural deficiency in the wall of the dural sinuses that are prone to to collapse and and stenosis more like a global collapse rather than like a focal narrowing. Mm 